Now, what Jay Parsons put out yesterday was very interesting. Uh, he said there there collections at the higher end, so B and A and B properties, which are generally professionally managed and uh, you know appeal to higher earning renters. Those renters have been able to absorb rent increases quite easily and have continued to pay them. So the great rent increases that we've been seeing have been really at the upper end and it's sort of skewed all the data, but that's mm -hmm. where the rent increases have been coming from as at the upper end, because these, these renters can't afford it, right? And really interestingly, he said that on average, what the data shows is that for these upper end renters, uh, you know, middle to upper end renters, they're paying on average sort of 22, 23% of their income in rent, right? Which is okay. sort of right... Right in yeah. that kind of like, remember, you, know, you when would you call that I, healthy. Yeah. You would oh, call yeah. When, okay. when you and yeah. I were younger, maybe that was sort of like. Yeah. 25 was the number, right? Yeah. Yeah. Financial planning 101. You spend 25% of your income on housing. Right. That yep. was that, that was, was the, the old limit. rule. Yep. And frankly, I've always applied that in my life, which is, you know, like <laughs> why I uh, probably live in a smaller apartment than I should. That's why, but, why you're so conservative. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God, I hate paying rent or paying mortgage. <laughs> I hate, yeah. I hate, I hate spending money on housing, <laughs> yeah. which just goes against everything I believe in. But anyway, um, the uh, so th those upper end renters are doing just fine. But what is the data showing now about the lower end renters, including renters in public housing? Well, yeah. collections have fallen off a table, so they've now got economic. They may have, you know. Occupancy is still of 95, 96, 97%, but their economic occupancy is now down in the 80s because yeah, people... Yeah, it's, it's it's funny you bring this up, right? Because I the last couple of years in our portfolio, we had a couple of... we had I think we had two evictions kind of over the pandemic um, for, uh, for cause, uh, which was allowed in California. And then, uh, you know, all that stuff goes away. And it's funny, we just we just actually had three um we just had three evictions uh last month, mm -hmm. which was more than we had all of last year. Uh and I think a lot of that is kind of what you're pointing at. There was a lot of people kind of getting by with different um programs or whatever they're called, kind of paying for it, or they adopt you know, or they felt they didn't have to pay, which certainly was one of their cases, like rent should be free. You don't understand because I'm special um, attitude. But yeah, we, we actually had three evictions in the last 30 days, three close, right? Finished uh, right. two sheriff lockouts and then one, whatever. Um, it'll be interesting to see if that continues. I think what I'm seeing in our portfolios, we're seeing that kind of, I don't know, rat through the snake. It mm -hmm. was delayed for a long time. Then we got hit. And we'll see if it, you know, right now it feels like we got over it. We got over the hump. So it'll be funny to see, it'll be interesting to see the stats in like three months. Yeah. Because I think a lot of the data is messy right now because everything was delayed. And maybe what we're seeing is just the output, such as my portfolio, right? Three in a month versus, you know, two all of last year. I don't know. It'd be interesting. 